Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to graph the cosecant and the secant functions. So our first objective here, uh, recall that the cosecant of x is the reciprocal of sine, so 1 over the sine of x. So in order to graph the cosecant function, we're going to first graph y equals the sine of x. And then we'll use that graph as the foundation for graphing the reciprocal. So consider the unit circle again. We're going to evaluate at each of the quadrantals at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then we will continue doing that also in the negative direction. So let's go ahead and graph sine. So when we graph the sine of x, the sine of 0, looking at our unit circle, is 0. We work our quadrantals, we go, go around the unit circle, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, the sine of pi again is 0, 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and 2 pi we are back at 0. So our sine curve looks something like this, and then we can do the same thing. We graph Evaluate at negative pi over 2. Our sine is negative 1. Negative pi, we're back at 0. 3 pi over 2 is positive 1. And we get back to 2 pi, and we're back at 0. So this is the graph of our sine curve. So we've got that in red. Something like that. But we want to graph the cosecant of x. Note that everywhere the sine of x is 0, the cosecant, its reciprocal, must be undefined, right? The reciprocal of 0 is undefined. So at all these locations in which I get 0 for sine, I must get undefined for our reciprocal function cosecant. So I have an asymptote here at 0. I have an asymptote at pi. I have an asymptote at 2 pi. And I have an asymptote at negative pi and negative 2 pi. So I put all my asymptotes in. So let's go ahead and, and see if we can graph the rest of this now. Well, knowing what we know about asymptotic behavior, we know that our graph has got to head towards those asymptotes. And thinking about the sine, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Well, the reciprocal of 1 is also 1. The cosecant at pi over 2 is also 1. And our cosecant curve is going to look something like that between 0 and pi. Moving to 3 pi over 2, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. And our cosecant curve is going to look like that. Following our asymptotic behavior, it's going to head towards negative infinity, both to the left and to the right from 3 pi over 2. And also from negative pi over 2, as I extend to the left and to the right, I'm going to follow my asymptotic behavior. And from negative 3 pi over 2, as I move to the right, it's going to go to positive infinity. And I go to the left, it's also going to go to positive infinity. The green is the graph of our cosecant of x. The red is just our sine of x that we use as a guide. We could simply erase that. And there is our cosecant curve. And you can see here our cosecant, it goes through an entire cycle between 0 and 2 pi. We have to include both the upward opening parabola, if you will, and the downward opening one to complete an entire cycle. Our period is 2 pi, and it extends from 0 to 2 pi. So since the period of cosecant of x 
extends from the range of 0 to 2 pi, we want to evaluate the cosecant of x function as follows. So if our function we have bx minus c equals 0 and bx minus c equals 2 pi. So in the following example, if you look at sample 2, if you peek ahead, sample 2, we have y equals the cosecant of x plus pi over 4. Well, the x plus pi over 4 is our bx minus c. The 2, again, is our amplitude. Same thing that we saw with our tangent curve. Same thing we've, saw, we've seen in, in graphing quadratics. And this is going to create some sort of phase shift. The x plus pi over 4, our b is 1, so our amplitude stays the same. But this is going to create a phase shift to the left by pi over 4. So let's take a look at our, our cosecant curve here. y equals 2 cosecant of x plus pi over 4. I need to set up my graph. I need to see where I'm going to evaluate. I'm going to subtract pi over 4 from both sides here, and I get x equals negative pi over 4. And I'm going to subtract pi over 4 again from both sides, and I get x equals 2 pi, right? Because I went from 0 to 2 pi, so I have to do that twice. Minus pi over 4. Now that's 7 pi over 4. So now I'm going to look and evaluate that function between negative pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Essentially, I'm shifting that a couple units to my left. So let's go down and take a look at this. We want to graph 2 times the cosecant of x plus pi over 4. Our amplitude is 2. Our period is 2 pi. And then we've already calculated the interval that we want to calculate that. We're going to calculate from negative pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4. So that's the region in which we're going to look for our points. But the first thing we want to do here is we want to go ahead and graph our sine curve. So let's graph this as sine first of all. Well we know that negative pi over 4 for x, if we put that in, let's go ahead and put that in. Let's take a look at that. So y equals 2 times the sine of our x is negative pi over 4 plus pi over 4. So we get 2 times the sine of 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. And let's go ahead and let's take a look at pi over 4. So y equals 2 times the sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 4. We get uh, 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 on our unit circle is 1. So we get 2 times 1, which is 2. So we're way up here at 2. And then at 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 4 pi over 4. And we get the sine is 0 again. At 5 pi over 4, I put 5 pi over 4 in for x, and I get negative 1, but times 2, so I get negative 2. And so I'm graphing my sine curve, and that's what my sine curve looks like. So my amplitude stretched this out from 1 to 2, or from 1 to negative 2. And then Going in the negative direction, I'm going to get the same type of thing. So I can plot those particular points. Hopefully I get those right. And I have now graphed just 2 times the sine of x plus pi over 4. But what I really want to do is graph the cosecant. I put in my asymptotes everywhere my sine function was 0. 
now my cosecant function is undefined. So now using my asymptotic behavior, I can go ahead and graph 2 times the cosecant of x of pi over 4. I know that the reciprocal, my hills are my valleys, my maximums are my minimums, so my maximums for sine are my minimums for the cosecant, my minimums for for sine are my maximums for cosecant. So I can simply sketch the graph of 2 times the cosecant of x plus pi over 4. And if I really want to, I can go ahead and erase my cosine function, and there is, or my sine function, and there is my cosecant. And if I want to graph the secant function, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. But now, instead of graphing sine, I'm going to graph cosine. And I'm going to do its reciprocals. So as with cosecant, note that any point in which cosine of x equals 0, the secant must be undefined. Well, let's graph that cosine function first. So I know that the cosine of 0 is 1. So graphing my cosine function at pi over 2 is 0. At pi, it's negative 1. 3 pi over 2 at 0. And at 2 pi, I'm back at 1. So my cosine curve looks something like this. So I'll continue graphing my cosine curve, evaluate at negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. So there is my cosine curve. Wherever cosine is 0, the secant is going to be undefined get my asymptotes for my secant curve. And then I will continue to graph my secant. Maximums for the cosine are going to be my minimums for the secant. My minimums for the cosine will be my maximum for the secant, creating, and then using my asymptotic behavior, I create my secant function. And if I want, I can go ahead and erase my cosine curve now. And I'm left with my just my secant function. And as you can see, the secant is also periodic, but it will be between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So we it's almost a shift. It is actually a shift of our of our curve. So, so y equals the secant of x is periodic period of 2 pi but from negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. So when we evaluate that well, I've got that written here. The full cycle for secant of x, there we go, is from negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. When we evaluate y equals the secant of bx minus c, now we're going to do bx minus c equals negative pi over 2, and bx minus c equals 3 pi over 2. And then we calculate the interval that we are going to uh, graph that at. And the process is going to be the same. If we want to graph the secant function, we'll graph the cosine function first, and then use the asymptotes and the hills and valleys, the maximums and minimums, to go ahead and graph our function. So we'll get a little bit more practice with this when I see you in class.